Hey guys, welcome to our very first van build video. Um, we are going to show you guys the entire process from buying a van, converting it, moving into it. What this series is not going to be is a series of tutorials uh, since when we bought the van and decided to convert it into a camper, uh, we didn't really feel comfortable in explaining things and, and telling you how to do it since there mm -hmm. are pl plenty of other tutorials and other channels on YouTube where you can find that sort of information. Yeah, it's not a step-by-step -step guide, it's just... No, it's just showing our process from buying to moving in. And with all the mistakes included. <laughs> yeah, of course. But now that we're actually sitting in our finished van, we do feel a bit more comfortable in uh, answering questions. So if you have any, if you are in the process of building your own van, you can always ask us questions and we will try to answer them as best as we can. So the whole process started about a year ago. Uh, first step was to actually buy a van. We spent several weeks looking for our perfect van. We weren't 100% sure uh, which van we wanted. We were thinking either a Ford Transit or a Mercedes Sprinter because online uh, these two vans were the ones you, s you saw the most mm -hmm. uh, converted. Most um, people seem to prefer one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of tutorials for either. But the Ford is a bit, bit cheaper. Also, if you have a breakdown or something, parts for the Transit van are usually a bit cheaper than the Mercedes. So th our preference went to the Ford. Yeah, but we couldn't really find the correct uh, van that we wanted because mm -hmm. we had a couple of criteria. We really wanted to be able to stand up inside the, the van. We also wanted windows in the mm -hmm. back and in the side door, uh, preferably. Most Fords that we saw were actually pretty small and the Mercedes standard that we have right now, we saw those everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we ended up going for the Mercedes. We are about to pick up our van. <coughs> How are you feeling? Excited. <laughs> I'm driving a van. Oh my what? God. <laughs> this is so weird. This is our baby. So after we finally got the van home, uh, the next thing we had to do was take out the walls and the floor and then clean it thoroughly because it was quite dirty. I think it had been used by electricians or something like that. Waterproof some holes and also put in some anti-rust solution uh, for where there were some rust marks in the floor and the walls. When we took out the walls, we also noticed that it's very dirty here because water was leaking in through the holes. Those are the clips of the side panels of the van. We have to take these out and clean them and then fill them up and make them waterproof. So we still have a lot of things to do. Yeah. Yeah. Teamwork. <laughs> Don't break it, Steve. I'm trying not to. <laughs> So while Steve is applying anti-rust on all the little holes in our van, I am cleaning all these clips so we can put some sealant on them and waterproof them. Steve's just taking a quick break, sunbathing. <laughs> Maybe we should make a lounge up here. Some lounge chairs. Maybe a pool. One of the main reasons to um, seal up all these holes is obviously not to have any holes in our floor. <laughs> um, and also to get ready for putting in the insulation. A lot of people, what they do before they put in thermal uh, insulation is they add these sound dampeners uh, to the walls to get rid of this uh, gong noise. Like if you bang on the wall uh, to get rid of that and that should also reduce a lot of the road noise as well. In preparation for this task I saw some YouTube videos and one of them mentioned that another main reason that you can have a lot of noise while you're driving the car is if these walls uh, aren't attached to the, to the ribs or the structure of the van anymore. So. We're just gonna go around now and try to find areas like this where obviously the wall isn't attached anymore um, and then also sealing those with this seal. 
So at this point we had the van prepped to start the actual conversion. Uh, the next thing we did was install our Max van. So we spent most of the day just driving around picking up stuff from the store and like things we ordered and like this part of our installation. Um, and also our fan arrived! The Air Max. No, the Max, Max fan. fan. <laughs> I think Air Max is a type of Nike sh Nike shoes, right? Oh, that's why we always say that. <laughs> or something. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Anyways, we have the Max fan, which is quite an expensive uh, fan, but it's it's supposed to be one of the best. We try to keep this conversion low budget, but on some things you just have to spend some money if you want a decent quality product and. Good airflow is important to us. Yeah, um, we're not putting in any additional air conditioning. No. It's probably a good idea to have yeah. good ventilation. Okay, so we already hit our first bump in the road. I was super excited about our Max fan. Um, I watched a ton of videos of people installing it in a Sprinter as well. It was supposed to fit perfectly between the two ribs, but we just discovered that it doesn't fit perfectly. <laughs> Uh, and we were like, I was w looking up videos. I'm like, how is that possible? Is our Sprinter van different? Is our is our fan different? I don't know. And then Steve read somewhere that apparently the European version of the Max fan, the flange is wider than the um, US version. So that explains a lot. It's not impossible to install it. We can still do it, but there are just a few extra steps that we didn't realize were necessary. So to be specific, the US version doesn't have this border, only this. So we kind of have two options. We can either cut our hole like this or cut it like this. It's also an option. So we decided to cut the bigger hole because then we only have to fill this up with putty tape and sealant. Otherwise we'd have to fill this up as well. We've seen people do it both ways so I don't think it really mat matters. We just decided to go with that. Now you know. We have a hole. <laughs> Yay. And also our Second or third mistake during this van build as well. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. We cut a hole for the European side. So this side is 40 by 40 centimeters. Because we were planning on fitting, or we were hoping that this part would fit nicely into the hole. But turns out because of all these recesses in the roof, that's not possible. What we should have done was just to cut it US size and have this uh, come down into the hole but it shouldn't be too much trouble I think we can make it work like this as well it's just if you're by chance doing a sprinter van conversion and you want to install this max uh, max fan European version uh, it's still we I think I'd recommend uh, just cutting it down to the mm -hmm. 35 and a half centimeters uh, and just filling the, the gaps up with some putty tape or something <laughs> We have our wooden frame installed as well for support. So this is what we were talking about. Now we have these gaps all in between, but it's not a problem. We can just seal it, uh, use sealant. Oh, oops. Oh, now we're connected forever. All right, it's time to put this baby in. <laughs> Here it is. Now we just have to screw the screws in and then we're done. So that concludes this video. Uh, in the next one we will tackle the floor. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, and with that, 
we will conclude this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>